Hey there everyone, we just launched a new community block. It's called the Zapier webhook block and I'm going to show you how it works on this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and delete these blocks here. And as you can see, I just have a regular blog post generator. I have my automations that uh, take in the topic and generate the blog post. Now let's say I wanted to collect an email and then I wanted to send that email over to my MailChimp list. Well, we can do that using the Zapier webhook block. Let's go ahead and start building. The first thing I'm gonna do is collect input. So I'm gonna say, enter your email, and we can save this as variable named email. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a function block, and we can go ahead and choose from the community function blocks, scroll down and select Zapier webhook. You can see the block is here, and on the right-hand side, the things we need to configure are the Zapier webhook URL and the input, the data we want to send over to Zapier. In this case, all we're going to be sending is an email, but you can send any variable you'd like or any text you'd like over to Zapier. So in this case, here we have our variable email, and now we need to set up our Zapier webhook URL. So to do that, we're gonna create a Zap on Zapier, and when you create a Zap on Zapier, you need to create a trigger and you need to create an action. So in this case, our trigger is simply going to be the Zapier webhook. So we can click on webhook and then we can choose an event. For this, we'll need to choose catch hook. And then we can tap on continue. Now for the child key, we don't need to fill this out. It's going to work without it. Let's go ahead and hit continue. Now it's going to listen for an event, but obviously there's no event being sent to it. And that's because we don't have the webhook URL set up yet. So we're going to go ahead and copy this URL that they give us. And then inside of Mind Studio, we're going to paste the URL inside of our Zapier webhook block. So now the block is all set up. Basically everything in the AI is all set up. We just have to finish setting up our Zap inside of Zapier. Now we have our webhook. Let's go ahead and test the trigger here nothing is going to happen. And the reason for that is we actually haven't uh, had the AI run that hook yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We can simply do that by opening a preview draft. And then we can add uh, our email here by starting a new thread. And we can say Luis at UAI.AI. In this case, uh, I'm an admin on the MailChimp account. So I'm going to say Luis plus one at UAI.AI. So there we go. Now, what would you like to write? This is the normal uh, AI. This is the normal part of the AI. So it's going to start going through and generating the content like normal. But what it's done is it's now sent over um, that uh, trigger event to Zapier. So when we go ahead and test the tri trigger again, we can see we now have a request. Here is the data being passed over to Zapier. So let's go ahead and use that. We'll continue with that record. And now we need to choose an action event. So in this case, I'm gonna add that email to my MailChimp mailing list. So when we have MailChimp, you're, it's gonna ask you to sign in. I'm already signed in. Then you can choose uh, event. And in this case, we're going to add an update subscriber here. So we can continue and we'll choose our account here. Here we go. Now we can continue and we have to choose our audience. In this case, we have an audience called Mind Studio Test and we need the subscriber email. Now the email is going to be that data that we pass through here and it's showing up via the webhook here. So there we go, it's all set up. We can choose to configure all of these other options and you may have other inputs that require you to go ahead and update the other values in here. But for now, we're gonna tap continue and you can see the emails being passed through. Let's go ahead and test this step to make sure that it's sending a new subscriber to MailChimp. So it says a subscriber was sent, a subscriber was sent to MailChimp and inside of MailChimp, if we refresh the page, we should see the subscriber in our mailing list. And you can see now Luis plus one at UAI.AI is in our mailing list. So. We can go ahead and name this zap. We can call it hook to MailChimp. And we'll go ahead and publish the zap. So now this zap is live and inside of Mind Studio, we can go ahead and publish our AI. 
And now when we start a new thread, let's say Luis plus 99 at UAI.ai, we can tap on next. And in this case, we'll make our blog post about cats, but it's already sent the trigger event to Zapier and we've already gotten a new subscriber to our mailing list. And we did all of that via the Zapier webhook block. Now again, you can use this for all sorts of different inputs. So uh, if you have a variable that's a data query or uh, maybe the output of a send message block, you can use that here. You can use any sort of personalization prompts. Any data that you'd like to send can be sent via this block. And then additionally, if you want to configure it on your own, you can always go into the Zapier webhook block, change up the code however you see fit. Let's go ahead and check back in. Let's refresh the page and we will see that indeed Luis plus 99 is now inside of UAI. So this is just the beginning. Obviously later on we are going to have different kinds of blocks that do integrate to all these services, but the Zapier webhook is a good start and Zapier connects to all sorts of different services that you can try using out uh, for yourself. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions or suggestions, and we'll see you next time.